I'm a double agent. Who are my two masters? The Drupal Association and the community. I was going to start with the Mission Impossible theme song, which I did when I did this at Bar Camp, a kind of rough early version. But I didn't get the track onto my computer, so you're just going to have to imagine right now the Mission Impossible theme song. Or maybe the Austin Powers theme song would probably be more appropriate. <laughs> um, can I get you to sit on this side, please? Because I'm not going to talk to that side of the room. There's only going to be a few of us. Please come on down. Sit on this side. Come, come, come. Yes. German Precision, 2.15. Oh, there's people streaming in. I don't know, do you want to introduce me? I'll introduce myself. Nah. Hi. Come on in. No, he said. Should I start again? All right, let's go. Guys, started. Shh. Okay, so I'm a double agent for the Dribble Association and the community. This is me. I also run my own small business, but that's really got absolutely nothing to do with today, except that it is very small. And I like to think that I am trying to represent voices of smaller Drupal users uh, in my mission on the board. This all began in 2010, when I joined the Drupal Association. When I first joined the Drupal Association, I then went to a session at DrupalCon San Francisco about meeting the Drupal Association, and I think it was called Stewards of the Drop. And I heard about how it worked, and then I went, so how do we vote? Oh, no, 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 no. Members don't vote for the Drupal Association. You just pay your membership fees to support the work of the association. I went, well, that sounds a bit weird. OK, fine, all right. So anyway, that's sort of where I first started to really understand what the Drupal Association was and what it did at DrupalCon San Francisco. So fast forward, you know, uh, a, little more, a little over 12 months, and I went again. I had the great fortune to go to DrupalCon London. And at DrupalCon London, I also went to a session which was about sort of the Drupal Association, kind of a bit, I guess, like the session you're at today, except I'm hoping this will be a little bit different. So at that session, there were a lot of people there from Drupal Associations around Europe who had formed national groups to get stuff done, run local camps, have a bank account just to, you know, be able to pay for t-shirts and, you know, the sorts of local things local communities do. And they had formed associations such as the, I'm going to murder this word now, the Denmark Vereinigung something. <laughs> it was, mm, yes, thank you. So effectively it means the Danish Drupal Association, but in Danish. So it doesn't sound like the Drupal Association. And there's an Italian one and a Portuguese one and I think there's one in Singapore and there are basically a few of these. So out of this session, this kind of growing, uh, I guess, bubbling sense of dissatisfaction came out of it and a boff was convened. The birds of a feather, the International Drupal Associations was convened, to which I toddled off. I think I've gotten way ahead of myself. Five continents were represented at the boff. Yes, I am very short. <laughs> yes, Scotland was somewhat overrepresented. But otherwise, uh, Africa was there, no one from Antarctica, uh, no one from South America, but um, it was very productive. And out of that, we formed uh, a group on GDO, on groups.drupal.org, International Drupal Associations. There being for these kinds of people to get together and share, you know, experiences and ideas. There hasn't been a lot of traffic there, but just that it's there, we've started to at least build connections. Made me think, though, we really kind of need... I mean, these organisations are happening. Some of them have the blessing of the... No, well, actually, none of them really have the blessing of the formal Drupal Association. 
Some people ask the Drupal Association if they can do it first and they kind of get told, oh no, well it's kind of tricky and others just go and do it and, and then it's done. I'm a bit of a ask for forgiveness, not for permission kind of a person, so that works for me. May not work for others. So the uh, United Nations of Drupal. What many of you are probably unaware of is that this um, is a contingent of Australians who went to San Francisco in 1945 to help to go to a meeting which formed the United Nations. They got involved in all the different meetings and they lobbied for two key things, one of which they were successful and one of which they failed. The one they failed was about the veto for the Security Council. They didn't think that was a very good idea, giving just those people all that power. One, the one that succeeded was that they said that everyone in the General Assembly should have a vote. Everyone. No, regardless of how big they are, how important they are, whatever, everyone in the General Assembly should have a vote. They won that. So Australia and Australians in international forums actually have a bit of a reputation for sticking up for the little guys. And that's what I feel like I'm doing. We also have a reputation for getting engaged in electoral reform. Uh, there are a few things we did first. The idea of the secret ballot was an Australian invention. We're the second country in the world to give women the vote. And we also have reformed electoral systems, preferential and proportional voting systems. These are very common in Europe, not very common in the US or the UK or Canada I right hear. Um, but it basically means that your vote, we, we go beyond first past the post and we really look for who do you really want to be there and if you can't have your first preference, who would your second preference be? This is quite important. And it was one of the things I argued for in the process of setting the first elections for the Drupal Association. Remember when I said that I joined and I thought it was weird I couldn't vote? Well, the Drupal Association's been through a major reboot and one of the things that's changed is we can now vote. And you ended up with me and Steve Perkis as your elected board members. Stand up, Steve, just for a quick minute. Which brings us to 2012. The first elections were held in February. Steve and I were elected to the board in February, um, and we went to our first in-person board meeting in Denver. And until that point, I was like, oh, what have I done? I have no idea what I am in for. But going to the meeting kind of settled me down. It's like, okay, I can deal with this, this is good. There is another in-person board meeting tonight, which you are all very welcome to attend. I don't know how interesting or entertaining it is likely to be, but you are very welcome to attend. And the important thing is it's about ultimate transparency. These are open board meetings. All our board meetings are open and that you can dial in and you can listen. And they're recorded and sometimes put online afterwards when people remember to do so. If you want to hear a recording because you missed it and it's not online, you bugger me and say, Donna, get that recording online. Well, executive, I'm going to talk about executive sessions later. So after DrupalCon, there was a change in the track chairs. And a new track chair was appointed. And the new track chair was American. And I looked at the list of track chairs, global track chairs for DrupalCon, and they were all American. Global. I do not think this word th means what you think it means. At least it doesn't mean what I think it means. So this is the world, the Drupal world. This is four of the five world's most populous nations. Let's just flip back. That contains one of the world's five most populous nations. And four of the others are there. One of those, oops, one of those is getting our first Drupal con. So let's rewind a little bit. The, uh, the Drupal Association was formed in 2006. There was a big bang. The server melted down. Dries replaced Drupal.org with a PayPal that button for donations. He raised $10,000 in 24 hours and then went, oh, shit, now what? So he needed to open a check account to bank the money and buy the server. So he formed a Belgian non-profit association to do that. And that's how it began. My hasn't it grown. Um, in 2009, DrupalCon Inc. was formed for kind of similar reasons. 
a massive kind of surplus had been generated by the huge success of DrupalCon uh, DC. And so that money was banked and uh, an American associate, well, an American corporation was formed to be able to handle that money and, pr and create and use it to you know, build the next DrupalCon and, and what have you. In 2011, this whole process was rebooted. Most of the functions that had kind of begun to e evolve inside the Belgian nonprofit were transferred to the US corporation and the US corporation was turned into a nonprofit 501c3. And this really just happened uh, late last year. And the new board was formed in, I think, late November. And they had their first, uh, they had their first in-person board retreat in December and a whole bunch of goals were set. Which brings us to the Drupal Association today. This is its mission statement. I have highlighted the, t the, the bits that I think are actually the most important. The Drupal Association fosters and supports the community and everything it does is about doing that. But what does foster mean? No, no, no. It means encourage, cultivate, promote, nurture, cherish, raise. Most importantly, I think, it means to look after something without owning it. The Drupal Association does not own the community, but it is there to look out for it. It also means to grow. And our community has grown hugely since 2006. And with growth, sometimes comes pain, and things need to be resolved in new and interesting ways. So the Drupal Association developed, um, you know, along with the mission statement, it, it, it tries to make that happen with these six things. Now, three of these things, I think, are what I call boring but important, and three of them, I think, are fundamental to what the Drupal Association is all about. I'll leave it as an exercise to the audience as to which is which, depending on your point of view. This one, I think, incredibly important, but kind of dumb. Legal work and advocacy. Oh, sorry, I should go back. Sorry, the GPL. Important, but dull. Uh, legal work and advocacy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on to make sure something like a DrupalCon um, can exist. I mean, really boring things like contracts and you know, making sure we have insurance and there are all sorts of little legal bits and pieces that need to be done. This is the kind of stuff that the Drupal Association looks after when it needs to. Um, one of the things it doesn't do is look after the trademarks. They belong to Dries. Dries pays lawyers to make sure the trademark is protected. The Drupal Association does not do that. But in all other respects, everything to do with DrupalCon, uh, everything to do with um, the, the associated stuff, which is not necessarily GPL, legal and advocacy work, is done, by, done and handled by the DA. The servers, imagine Drupal without Drupal.org. It is number one priority. If something's going down on Drupal.org, it, it, it actually surpasses anything that might be happening to even a DrupalCon. So, the servers are very important, but also not really that exciting. Unless, of course, you're into real servers, and then I know it's very exciting for you. I'm not. I don't know what's going on. And this is one of the ones I think is really central. We're all here, right? Drupal Con. Um, it's a big event. It requires a lot of energy, investment, expertise, uh, but it's really fundamentally about bringing the community together to learn from each other, to share their knowledge, to work on the project. This is about fostering and supporting the community. Communicating the benefits of the Drupal software. This is something I don't think we're doing as successfully as we could yet, but MARTA is part of a team that's working on that. We're getting better at this. But it's also, if there are challenges here, how do you communicate the benefits of something like Drupal to the, the vast world, the vast Drupalverse of people who can use it or might use it for different things. There's a lot of going on here. We're not talking about just, you know, what does the Drupal Association do? We're talking about the whole project and the community. And then empowering a Drupal community to participate. And for me, this is what 
this is really important. I mean, actually, three of those photographs were taken of Drupal cons. So DrupalCon, as I say, is still is really central to what the Drupal Association is about. And the Drupal Association is, um, it's, let's be honest, it's bread and butter as DrupalCon. There are other revenue streams, and I'm coming to that, but DrupalCon is what, is what the Drupal Association spends most of its time and energy on and where it gets most of its revenue. Speaking of revenue, ah, oh, damn it. I'm so sorry, I forgot to bring the annual reports. Okay, there are annual reports which have these figures in them floating around. Some of you will have them in your conference packets and these figures are there. These are too small to read now and I'm not going to go into detail anyway. The real point here is that now that the Drupal <laughs> Association is a 501, this stuff is all transparent. You can go see this and the latest 990 has been filed and is online at association.drupal.org. You can download the report from there as well at association.drupal.org and you can scrutinise these numbers. And if you have questions about these numbers, bring them to us. This is not in the annual report but is in the latest 990. And I wanted to pull this out because I think this it shows that whilst there is a very strong and, and I think valid perception that the Drupal Association is a teensy bit too American focused, uh, we are starting to fund and support uh, projects and events outside of the United States. Um, there's two key categories there. Um, cash grants for travel expenses, so sending, um, sending uh, developers to sprints and regional summits and Drupal cons and all that sort of stuff, and uh, the community cultivation grants. got the fizzy version, it's quite nice. So you can see there that, you know, the rest of the world, I like to say rest of the world, is kind of there. In 2012, the Drupal Association board um, had decided to concentrate on six things. Um, improving Drupal.org was number one. And number six, for site builders and developers. This was a huge project. There was a lot of work done by our good friend Angela Byron. I don't know if she sleeps. But she really rallied people to talk about, well, how could we improve Drupal.org? And she ran um, consultations and she talked to people and she came up with this huge list of things. And it pretty much kind of settled into two buckets. You know, there was stuff that developers wanted to make it easier to, you know, work on code, and there was stuff that site builders wanted to, you know, evaluate modules and a whole bunch of things. So these were the kinds of things that bubbled to the top. Now, improving the site for uh, developers was number one, and improving the site, for, improving Drupal.org for site builders was number six of the six objectives for 2012. But a lot of them depended on should we upgrade to Drupal 7 before we do all of this new development? And that was a big question. Well, should we do this development on D6? Well, it might have been a bit biased by Angie's love of D7, but D7 seemed to make more sense. So the Drupal Association has invested a lot of time and a lot of money into this uh, upgrade of Drupal.org to D7. And there have been some improvements along the way. It's not something we're all waiting for the upgrade, but it's, it's actually a really big job. But it's seen as kind of critical. If we're not running our most current version of Drupal on our own website, you know, I think that's a kind of compelling argument. The training directory. So one of the things that's been identified as a problem for Drupal is the lack of talent. How do we get more people knowing Drupal? How do we put them in touch with people in, their local, in the local part of the world where they can learn more? So we're building a training directory to help people with that. And part of that is a big communication um, challenge as well. So we've started global Drupal training days, which allow people to, um, allow those companies to say, okay, let's do training on this four days a year and concentrate our communication so that more people know about it. So the next one's coming up, 14th of September. There are already a bunch. Marta, how, roughly how many have we got signed up now? 
We've got about 18 or 20 signed up more. So if you're a trainer and you're not signed up or you know trainers and they're not signed up, please get them to do so and engage. And engage in the global kind of buzz around it. We have a hashtag, learn Drupal, hash learn Drupal. And I really want to see kind of, you know, some buzz around this as, you know, as we, as we get towards it and, and on the day itself. <laughs> it's right before Software Freedom Day, so that could be good too. Regional events for developers. Now, this is the one I know least about. Does anyone, can, can you do a quick update on regional events for developers? Code sprints around the world. Right, code sprints around the world to kind of work on things and help get developers to these events is one of the things that we're also been looking at. Drupal as a career choice was one of our six objectives and it is the one that has received the least love. The Drupal Association staff kind of ran out of energy and time to put into this. But I think the community still has a place here. This is an idea to reach out to universities, whether it's creating student user groups on campus or reaching out to um, academics who might be teaching web and teaching computing, to start looking at Drupal as part of that mix, as, as an example set, and, and just you know, generating users. There are heaps of universities using Drupal. So I feel like we have connections where we could be doing more with this than we are. And if the Drupal Association can't, now, you know, my double agent hat here, the community can. We, we should be working together on these kinds of things. Which brings us to now, Munich, DrupalCon. Are you all having an awesome DrupalCon? It's pretty good. Food, air conditioning, food good, air conditioning. <sighs> There's a board meeting tonight. So this will be my third in-person board meeting. And this was one of the things that I also kind of argued against when we were sort of talking about how we're going to have these first elections. Well, one of the things that was said was that board members had to commit to um, a certain number of um, teleconference meetings a year and four in-person face-to-face meetings. They also said we want to have a more diverse kind of board. And I went, so you want a more diverse board and you've got to go to these four meetings and you have to pay to attend those meetings yourself. And that's like halfway around the world for me. I don't think I couldn't afford it. And I was upfront about it. There's no way I could afford it. Because effectively, three of those meetings would be in North America and one would be in Europe, two at Drupal Cons and two at other times. I just thought I couldn't do it. So I think saying you want diversity and having this requirement to attend meetings and pay for it yourself these are mutually exclusive things. Sure, you can, you know, have either of them, but you can't have both. Make your choice, which is more important. And I was compelling, apparently, in that argument. And the Drupal Association acknowledged that they would support the travel funds um, for people who couldn't afford it. And I said, well, I think that's fair. That means we might get people from parts of the world for whom, you know, this kind of expense is just not, not doable. Thank you. So, I also got involved in the election, in the debates about how we should have the elections, that preferential voting thing I mentioned. I also talked about who should vote, and there were debates about this setting up this election. And I, um, there were a few different ways. Should it just be members of the Drupal Association? Remember, way back at the start, I was like, I'm a member, where do I vote? So, should we give those people a vote? Should it just be members of the Drupal Association who elect these community members of the board? Well, it's not really representative of the entire community either, is it? So we settled on people who have accounts on Drupal.org, who have been active in the past 12 months and created their accounts more than two weeks ago when we announced the elections were happening. So that was kind of how we defined what I call the citizenry of Drupal. You are a citizen of the Drupal verse if you have an account on Drupal.org. Some are more active than others. Some just go there, submit an idle bug report and nick off again. Others are spend their days and nights hammering the issue queues, deeply involved in the project. All of these people are part of our community. I also think there are parts of our community who do not have accounts on Drupal.org. There are probably colleagues in our organisations. There are our clients. There are users. There are hobbyists who have you know, found Drupal on a shared host that was installed by someone else for them have set up little websites. I feel like they are part of our community. Not everyone agrees. But we settled on, have an account on Drupal.org, 
active in the past 12 months as our citizen reef. I really didn't segue well into this slide. So I mentioned before that FIT, one of those countries that is largely populous, the first Drupal Con in the Southern Hemisphere is happening in Sao Paulo in December. I think that's pretty cool. I think this is even cooler. I might be a little bit biased in both directions because Sydney, sound from Melbourne. No, I won't get into that. Um, it is really important from my perspective that we, uh, that those of us who are not part of the sort of North American uh, community are loud and in Australian terms, obnoxious about being invisible. We're not invisible. Um, we're great friends at parties. <laughs> um, that, we, that, that the global community, Drupal community is, is as global um, in its representation and in its actions as the association as it is in reality. There are people at this conference from all over the world. I would like to see them participating in the governance of our, of our project. Now, like I said, the Drupal Association has nothing to do with the project itself. It's about fostering and supporting the community. And I'm a community elected at large member of the board. So you see how I see these things are like this. I just wanted to, how am I going, can someone give me a time check? 2.42, excellent. So we've got a bit of time here. I wanted to just pause for a moment and ask you a few questions. This is a bit of a twist. I know you usually ask the presenter, but I actually want to ask you some questions. Is that okay? Excellent. Um, what I might, what I want to do, and we're gonna have a bit of a dead spot in the recording now, I apologize, maybe they can cut it out later and whatever, is get you just within sort of your groups to just turn to each other and have a quick chat. So there's two, two things I really want you to just talk about amongst yourselves. And that is, why did you come to this session? Like back in 2010, I went to the stewards of the Drop Drupal Association session to, you know, find out more about it. I know some of you here know deeply about the Drupal Association, so it wasn't pure curiosity. Some of you, it would be. Just, so why, why would you want to, you know, come to a session like this? And what do you want to get out of it? What do you want to go away and think, change, do, feel? Just want you to quickly talk amongst us, yourselves. What is it about the Drupal Association that you want to know? Share what you do. Share what you'd change. And then we'll have a quick report back, okay? We don't have a lot of time. That's why I want you to clump so there's lots of discussion. So I'm gonna sort of clump here. You guys turn around and talk to people behind you. You guys sort of clump around there and then up sort of the back there and up sort of the back there. All right, go. Okay, time to hit the play button and get going. So first, before, before we really dive back into it, I really wanna thank you because I know that was a bit weird, but I, I always found that you come to these things and Ideas come up and you sit in these talks, and I, I really think that it's important to communicate you know, amongst each other. I'm not the only expert here. There is expertise in the room and, and, and ideas to be shared, so thank you for indulging me uh, in that. The big thing now is, so now what? So the, some people have said that the Drupal, they didn't really know that there was this kind of global Drupal association. Well, the global bit, of course, is debatable, right? But you know, there is the Drupal association. Get involved. This is why I say, if you do not like the way the new Drupal Association works, there is but one way to change it. Well, actually, there are always two ways to bring about change, evolution and revolution, right? Well, I actually think there has been a kind of revolution, but I think it was a bit top down, right? There was change, but it was driven by people who discussed it all in kind of private. Sure, they posted what they were doing, but it was very much, you know, happened behind closed doors. A change happened. But now that it now that change has happened, I think it is up to us to get involved and say what we want. How do we want this to work for us? Again, my two hats. Double agent, remember. Stand for the board. You know, as Shuao was just discussing. Steve and I did that. A bunch of other people did that. I think there were 10 candidates. There were 10 candidates for these two spots. Some people thought there should have been way more than that. I was pleased there was 10. But I think Steve would say, you know, at some point, I think someone, Vesa, who was on the board, tapped him on the shoulder and said, you should run. 
there's only been a couple of nominations. So I hope we see a lot more than 10 nominations in the next round. So Steve just said, I'm just repeating for the recording, that it was back at a, one of the CXO events in, in Europe. Um, he went up to Vesser and said, so how many people have applied? And Vesser said, oh, we've only had two. So, so Steve thought, well, I'll throw my hat in the ring. Sorry, that's a colloquialism, isn't it? I will have a go at that. That's probably also a colloquialism. Anyway, um, I think you get what I mean. So standing for the board is, is something that I would recommend if you really want to be involved at it is the highest level, but that doesn't mean that you're removed from the action. Like, I've spent hours at DrupalCon volunteering, and it's been fantastic. And working directly with the staff, and part of my infiltration, I had to go to Portland for one of the Drupal Association meetings, and I spent a week in the office with the staff. And that was fantastic. Boy, was that, you know, an eye-opener, because it really, you know, I really got a chance to understand that they're human beings. They're not just staff, right? I met them all. We hung out. They, you know, picked me up and dropped me off and were absolutely lovely, you know. They, these are real people, not just the staff of the Drupal Association who live all the way on the other side of the world. And Marta is, is a staff member and she's here, so thank you for coming, Marta. It's really cool. But it is, it is, it is a huge commitment. It's a big time commitment, so that's not for everyone. Maybe you could encourage someone else to stand for the board, right? Maybe you know someone who would bring a voice that is unheard, and we know that, you know, Se um, seven of the, seven of the, no, 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 that's not right. I've got my wrong, no, that's not, that's right. Seven of the current people live in uh, North America. No, six, sorry, six live in North America. Vesa lives in uh, the UK. He was in Finland. Steve is also in the UK. And uh, I'm from Australia. So still primarily North American, couple from Europe, and then me representing the rest of the world. <laughs> and that, you know, I'm a native English speaker, so that's not really all that diverse. I'm a girl, that's a big tick for diversity. We're not doing too badly, because we've got Tiffany and Denise and Angie as well. So, you know, gender diversity is not too bad on our board. But if you know someone who would, you know, who has the kind of craziness <laughs> to do something like this, encourage them to think about it at least. I am surrounded by amazing people, and I am quite sure that the next board will also be an opportunity to work with incredible people. Dries will be there, that's pretty cool. You know, I get a little bit fangirly sitting there with Dries and Angie going, that's just, anyway, that's just me, sorry. But you know, Tiffany and Steve, who's here, which is fantastic, and Vesa, Kerry. Kerry was involved with running DrupalCons before we had staff. So he's put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into it. And Denise is someone who was sort of from outside the community but has a lot of experience in open source um, associations. So she brings that. Jeff runs phase two, so he has a more sort of uh, managerial kind of corporate thing. It, and I'm an Angie, I think. Do I need to introduce Angie to anyone? Maybe the person who doesn't know Drupal. She's the release manager for Drupal 7. She, she works like 24 hours a day. I don't know, she's amazing. So really great people, honored, honored, humbled to hang out with these people, discuss Drupal, the issues of the Drupal Association. You could join them, or you might know someone who could join them. One of the really easy things, who here is a member of the Drupal Association? Who here is not a member of the Drupal Association? Who here is going to become a member of the Drupal Association as a result of me waxing lyrical? Two, three, no, no more? If you do, you can sign up here on site in the bookstore, go and speak to Chris, she's out, another one of our fabulous staff members, and sign up. Those of you who are members, please talk about the Drupal Association and what it does and how it supports the community. Because membership, whilst it's fairly small amounts of money, I think it's something like 22 euros to join as an individual and 72 euros to join as an organisation. I mean, it's really, it's chicken feed. It's not a lot of money. We also have a sliding scale. So if it's too much money, you can choose to pay less. If you think you're, you could pay more, you can choose to pay more. That's fairly new. We also have a renewal system now. So if you used to be a member of the Drupal Association, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, we kind of had a bit of a problem sending out renewal emails. That seems to be fixed. So, you know, renew, but, you know, encourage others. This is a pretty low bar to, to get involved and, and 
help because membership is one of the, th the revenue streams which is not DrupalCon. So it's actually really important as a separate kind of income stream. Follow us on Twitter at Drupal Osok. Talk to us on Twitter at Drupal Osok. We've also got Facebook. Think, and there's, there's email and there's forums and there's the IRC channels. Come and talk to us. If something's giving you the irrits, something is annoying you, if, something, if you think something is fantastic like DrupalCon and you've had a great week, let us know. Come and talk to us. Groups.drupal.org slash Drupal Association. We have a group there. Stuff like the elections, the debates that I was talking about, that happens there. If you really want to get involved in how things work and where things are up to, come here. We have issue queues for the stuff around the Drupal world. Drupal.org has an issue queue. Get involved with that. That's helping. We need people to engage in the kind of engines and infrastructure and the things that make our world tick. Get involved in the issue queues. Get involved in the development of COD. Like I mentioned that DrupalCon is so core to what we do. Well, we're using the conference organizing distro. We need more bodies. We need, we need all the help we can get. Whew. No, it's, it's a big part of what the Drupal Association does. But I can't, can't emphasize enough the importance of doing this, voting. So you remember I said about we had the arguments about who could vote? Well, once we kind of crunched the numbers, that came to about 250,000, a quarter of a million people could vote in the elections. How many do you think actually did? No, no one who knows can say this. Sorry, 15,000? 50,000. I hear any others? 500? 500. 3,000? 655. You get the chocolate if I had one. 655 people actually voted out of the 250,000. Now, one, I know we have one big job, and this is going to fall in Marta's camp. We need to get the word out that the elections are happening a lot better. We absolutely must. So you are now all my agents of change. You are all tasked with making sure people know about the elections, they know about nominations, and they know about voting. It's not just for Drupal Association members, it's for every member of the Drupal community who has an account on Drupal.org. Can you do that? Would you be willing to do that? I think this is important. Voting's compulsory in my country. Some people think that's weird. For me, this is like a bottom, this is like the lowest common denominator of participation in a community, in your organization, in your, in your, you know, in your world, right? Lowest common denominator. Just vote. For some people, it's a really hard fought right. We shouldn't take it for granted. I started with wondering where I could vote. I ended up elected. Don't know how that happened. But we can do it. Let's do it. Thank you. And uh, this is the uh, feedback slide. I have made a big QR code, if that's your thing. I've also got a couple of shorthand URLs to get to basically my session, um, my session node and, and give us some feedback. The feedback um, is, is an important part of helping the track chairs know whether or not <laughs> they should ever let me talk again. Um, but in general, across the board, if you've been to sessions, please do go and give your feedback. It is, again, a very small part of your duty to participate, to feedback on what we've done. So um, I hope you do. Please feel free to get in touch with me at Cuttercrub on Twitter, Donna at cuttercrub.net by email. Um, hashtag double agent if you want to talk about um, what we've discussed today. And uh, thank you all so much for coming. <laughs>